as I continued on my journey, um, I was mastering Gina Thompson's album, right? And I was in mastering with her powers in New York. And it just so happened the time that I was mastering her album, Puff, Diddy, Sean Combs was in the next room and he heard the music coming through the walls. He came into our room and looked at Herb and said, yo, what's that? What's that? And Herb was like, this, this kid right here. And he's like, you did that? And I was like, yeah. He goes, where are you staying at? I said, I'm staying at the Days Inn on 49th and 8th. He goes, I'm picking you up tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I was supposed to leave to go home. He goes, I'm picking you up tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Be ready. Just like that. Next thing you know, that little silver convertible Benz. Yep. He was banging um, Goody Mob. Me and you. Da, 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 da. He was banging Goody Mob. And I'm standing out there with my luggage. And he picked me up, like he said he would, at 1 o'clock the next day. And he took me to Daddy's house. And... And he showed me his studio. Then he took me to his apartment and he showed me the room I'm going to be staying in. He said, you're going to be working with me for the next few days. Yeah. He literally, had me. He literally had to call my dad like that. I'm going to be in New York for a few more days. And that night I, I did the Total No One Else remix with Little Kim, Foxy Brown, and DeBrat. Yep. The first thing I did with Puff, first thing we did together. And, and I started building my relationship with Puff. And we started building this, this, this cool relationship. And Puff... He would take me to the clubs, and I was young, but he would take me to clubs. Like, you got to understand how the 808s move and how the energy, the eight, what it sound like. And I'll never get being on, like, the stage, and it would be just me, Puff, and Biggie. And we on, on, the, on the stage together at his parties. And I'm listening to the sound. He's whispering my ear, listen to that. Listen to how them shakers are moving in here. Listen to how the people was moving and how they grew into the sound. And he was telling me this stuff. And I, it was completely different from Teddy's teaching. Mm -hmm. Completely, you know. But I was taking it all in, and it was adding to my repertoire. And as I started to develop even more sound, um, I was doing stuff for Puff, and it sounded like Bad Boy. So if I, if I play you any of my productions in that era, it sounded just like a Bad Boy production. And so Puff wanted me to be part of the Hitman. Mm -hmm. And Puff offered a contract for me to be part of the Hitman. And... I was actually going to sign the contract. I actually was real close to signing the contract. And um, prayerfully, God said no. At the last, the last day to sign the contract, God said no. And we had to look Puff in the eyes and say, God said no. And he was like, what? Good God, God. I was like, yeah, God said no, Puff. And I ended up not signing with Puff. And I... Um, Again, it was a thing where it was like if I would have signed with Puff, and I believe God was protecting me because God knew he had birthed the sound in me. And if I was signed to someone else, whether it was Teddy or Puff, I would be enhancing their sound. Their sound, there you go. And not my own sound. So it took a lot to turn down two, you know, six-figure deals in, in a matter of a year span. Um, but we did, and we continued to build our own business. And... From that, we had faith and we had work. And when we worked our faith, then, then, came, Mary, then came Mary J. Blige. Then came, um, you know, my first meeting with Clive Davis and him playing me. I'm playing him a song for Whitney Houston. And he telling me it's the worst song you ever heard and da, 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 da. And I didn't remember. I took that negative energy and I went back and I created. It's just not right. It's not right, but it's okay for Whitney from that energy. You know what I mean? And my career just began to kind of just flourish in a very quick way too. My dad said it was going to happen this way because I'll never forget having a meeting with Bruce Carbone at Mercury. Uh -huh. And I had a production deal there. And Bruce Carbone said, you know, we really believe in Rodney. we got to take this really slow and really, really slow. And we're going to climb slowly with him. And, I, and my dad looked at Bruce and said, that's not what God told me. And Bruce looked at my dad like he was crazy. My dad was really bold with it. And my dad said, God said my son is going to shoot up fast. He's going to be one of the top producers in the world fast. That's what God told me. So I don't believe in what you just said. <laughs> Say that to wow. us. Wow. And it good. happened. And it happened, man. It ha exactly how my dad, how, how my dad called it out. It happened. Confidence. What, you know, because you're, you're naming so many different artists now. You're naming super producers, uh, industry executives at the time. Puff was the young, hot, it guy in the industry wanting to sign you. Every time that those contracts came to you, every time you did a new beat for, for a different art, like, 
Where, where's your confidence level at this point? Is it through the roof? At, do you, is through it getting you closer through to believing like through the roof? Really? Through the roof. Through the roof. I mean, I was confident as a child, though. I was confident as a young when I knew what I could do. But now when I started working with these artists, now that I'm working with these artists and, you know, it's, it's a lot different from now. Like, you have you have to nail it in, the, in that one moment. Like, when yeah. I met with Mary J. Blige for the first time, my first meeting with Mary J. Blige, I played her the, the beat to I Can Love You, Share My World. In the first meeting, I played her. All those records on Share My World was in the first meeting. I, had, wow. I did all those beats the night before. All the night before, serious? dead serious. Did all those beatings the night before. <laughs> when Stockley <laughs> called me, I did all those the night before. Wow. And, I, and, I do, and I'm so sorry because you're giving so much good stuff. And I, I don't want to. Yeah, we might have to do part two of it. bring out of this interview. So just bear with me. Uh, At what point did you say to yourself, right? I know your confidence is high. And there's a lot of hot shots out there. Maybe they play ball. Maybe whatever they do in their life. What, at what point did you realize I actually belong? Like, like I be, I, I'm looking up to these people, and it's great that they're endorsing me. It's great I'm working with these artists, but I belong here. Is that something that came over time, or is that as your confidence went up, you 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 started to understand? Look, in these meetings, in this room. Whether I'm in the studio, I belong. I'm just as talented, if not more talented, than the people I'm working with. Yeah, I would see that early on. Really? I was, yeah, I saw that early on, like when I would be in a room with Teddy or Rick room with Puff, and, and, and I would be doing stuff and watching how they would vibe to what I was doing. And, you know, and I would be like, man, I, if they vibe into this, like this in this room, and they're the ones that, that everybody's loving what they're doing, I know I could do this. Because you know, I mean? you know there's so many people out there who are talented and they're gifted. And no matter what industry they're in, a lot of what holds them back is fear. A lot of what holds them back is putting themselves out there because they don't want to get it wrong. And so much of it is the conscious thought of, I belong. Like, I you actually belong. You have, to know, you have to know that you belong and you got to know that you're different. You got to know that God made you different. You got to know that the, the, in, different in a good way, meaning you stand out. Yes. I'm different because I stand out. Like if I if I do what you're doing, then I'm then I'm doing what you're doing. Instead, I need to be my own. I need to stand out. I need to be in the crowd. I need to see me differently. And so, and working with those geniuses and getting that, that t the tutorials, the live in person tutorials from these masterminds like Teddy Riley and and um. And you know, Diddy oh. and Michael Jackson, like these are these are geniuses I learned from. But I also knew that I stood out. I knew I was different when I when um when Hank Shockley called me and said we having a listening party for Mary J. Blige, and we inviting the producers to come play their tracks. And I knew I didn't know all I, I all I knew was Easy Mo B was to the left, and this person Malik Pendleton to the right, and all these different producers. But when I'm looking and I'm hearing the music being played through the walls, I'm like I stand out. I'm telling myself that before I get in the room to play the records, I'm telling myself I hear it through the walls. And when she hears my music, she's going to fall in love with it because I knew in my heart of hearts that what they was playing, it wasn't that what they playing wasn't good, but I knew what I had stood out. I knew that when she pressed play on me, it was going to be something different. And you got to tell yourself up. You got you to build yourself up, right? David in the Bible encouraged himself. You got to encourage yourself and say, you know what? I'm different from everybody else. I stand out. I'm uniquely different because that's what God created me to be. So I love I'm this. Not among, I'm not, I love I'm not it. like you. I'm not like you. And, and there's nothing wrong with you, by the way. You stand out in your world. You're amazing in the things that you do, right? That's, that's, and that's it, man. That's, you live by that, man. I've been living by that. And oh, I, still, I, I, still, I still feel that now. I feel that now, even older and older, I feel like I stand out. Like if someone press play right now, and it could be amazing, I feel like I can come right behind them and press play and stand out. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.